Another day, another story. While doctors in ancient Rome prescribed macabre elixirs and used dreams for diagnoses, they also made significant medical advances. Medicine in ancient Rome combined scientific knowledge with supernatural and religious beliefs. Welcome to Tabo Eminent Channel. Roman doctors adopted many of the practices and philosophies of the Greek physician Hippocrates and his followers, particularly after the 219 BC arrival of Archagathus of Sparta, credited as the first Greek doctor to practice in the city. Yet, ancient Romans also wore amulets to ward off disease and offered votives at temples to gods credited with healing powers. The blend of these two approaches produced some of the following surprising facts about health and medicine in the Roman Empire. Ancient Roman medicine was a complex blend of science, superstition, and practicality. Some fascinating facts about it include. 1. The blood and liver of slain gladiators were believed to be cures for epilepsy. The spilling of a gladiator's blood didn't necessarily end after losing a fight to the death. Without a scientific understanding of the cause of epilepsy, Roman doctors recommended that those who suffered from the mysterious affliction drink warm blood drawn from the cutthroat of a slain gladiator as an elixir. The blood of gladiators is drunk by epileptics as though it were the draft of life, reported Roman scholar Pliny the Elder. Doctors also advocated the consumption of a gladiator's liver as a treatment. Roman doctor Scribonius Largus reported spectators would step forward and snatch a piece of liver from a gladiator lying gutted in the dust. Physicians may have prescribed the macabre remedies because gladiators were seen as symbols of virility who died healthily. Yes, it is true that in ancient Rome, there was a belief that the blood and liver of slain gladiators could be used as a treatment for epilepsy, among other ailments. This belief was rooted in the idea of sympathetic magic, which held that consuming or applying parts of a strong, virile individual, such as a gladiator, could transfer their strength and vitality to the person seeking a cure. The practice of using gladiator blood and organs as remedies was not based on scientific evidence but on superstition and cultural beliefs. It was also seen as a form of entertainment and spectacle, as the blood and organs would sometimes be consumed or applied during public events in front of crowds. However, it's important to note that such practices are considered both medically ineffective and ethically problematic today. Epilepsy, in particular, was not well understood in ancient times, and various treatments and superstitions were associated with it. Ancient medical practices often included a mix of empirical observations, folklore, and magical thinking. Fortunately, our understanding of epilepsy and medical treatments has significantly evolved since ancient Roman times, and we now have evidence-based approaches to manage this neurological disorder. 2. Ancient Rome's most prominent physician influenced the practice of medicine for 1,300 years after his death. Born and raised in Greece, Galen of Pergamon studied anatomy and physiological theory in Alexandria, Egypt, and honed his medical skills by treating wounded gladiators in his birthplace before settling in Rome in 162 AD. In addition to performing surgeries such as cataract removals, Galen advocated exercise, a balanced diet, good hygiene and bathing and theorized that the brain, not the heart, controlled the body. He was the first doctor to demonstrate that the larynx generates the voice and identify the difference between venous and arterial blood. Serving as the personal physician to several emperors, Galen advanced anatomical knowledge through his care of gladiators and dissections and vivisections of animals. He wrote hundreds of medical treatises, some of which remained standard references until the 1500s. 3. The key to good health was thought to be keeping the four humors in balance. Roman doctors ascribed to the theory developed in ancient Greece that a person's health and emotions are governed by four internal substances, blood, phlegm, yellow bile and black bile. These humors were connected to the four elemental qualities, hot, cold, wet and dry. Roman doctors attributed a range of ailments to an imbalance in a body's humors. Galen, for instance, believed an excess of black bile caused cancerous tumors. Equilibrium could be restored through treatments such as bloodletting, vomiting, enemas, inducing sweat and the ingestion of large quantities of foods classified as hot or cold and wet or dry. 4. Opportunities to study human anatomy were limited. Ancient Rome's prohibition of most dissections of human corpses, because of religious, ethical and public health concerns, hampered anatomical studies. Doctors such as Galen instead relied on the dissection and vivisection of animals, in particular pigs and primates because their anatomical structures mirrored those of humans. These dissections were public spectacles that served as entertainment and a method for doctors to attract new patients. 5. Doctors used dreams as diagnostic tools. Many ancient Roman physicians took dreams into consideration when making diagnoses and determining treatments because they believed they could be signals from the soul about humoral imbalances in the body. 
Doctors believed dreams could provide insights about patients that were hidden from direct observation. Whatever the ill see and seem to do in dreams often will indicate to us lack in excess in quality of humors, Galen wrote. For instance, dreams that included snow or ice were thought to indicate an excess of phlegm, a humor considered cold and wet, while those that featured fire signaled elevated levels of bile, a humor considered hot and dry. Galen diagnosed a wrestler who dreamed of struggling to breathe while standing in a cistern of blood as suffering from an excess of the humor, so he prescribed bloodletting as the treatment. 6. The army's medical corps allowed Roman soldiers to live longer than Roman citizens. Emperor Augustus established the first professional military medical corps, which attracted professional Greek doctors by granting rights of full Roman citizenship, tax exemptions and retirement pensions. The medical corps formed one of the first dedicated field surgery units, erected well-designed sanitation systems to ward off disease and pioneered both the hemostatic tourniquet to stop hemorrhaging and the to shut arteries for suturing. Camp doctors stood at the empire's medical vanguard by absorbing new ideas through their travels and studying human anatomy while performing surgeries on wounded soldiers in field hospitals. Thanks in part to the innovations of ancient Rome's medical corps, the life expectancy of the average soldier was five years longer than that of the average citizen. 7. Medical professions were open to women. Based on medical treatises, legal texts and funerary inscriptions, scholars have concluded that women practiced medicine in ancient Rome. While female doctors were not prevalent, it was more common to find women acting as midwives, working under the guidance of doctors to assist in childbirth and administer fertility drugs. Female doctors, who occasionally practiced in disciplines other than gynecology and obstetrics, tended to be free women of Greek origin, while midwives had often been previously enslaved. In ancient Rome, medical professions were generally not open to women in the same way they are today. The practice of medicine was largely dominated by men, and formal medical education and training were typically reserved for male practitioners. However, there were some exceptions in roles that allowed women to participate in healthcare and healing to a limited extent. Here are a few ways in which women were involved in medical practices in ancient Rome. Midwives. One of the most common roles for women in ancient Roman healthcare was that of midwives. Midwives were responsible for assisting women during childbirth and providing maternal care. Midwifery was considered an acceptable and important role for women in Roman society. Herbalists and healers. Some women in ancient Rome practiced herbal medicine and healing. They would use their knowledge of herbs and folk remedies to treat various ailments and provide basic healthcare services to their communities. Religious healing. In some cases, women held positions as priestesses or healers within religious contexts. Temples dedicated to healing gods like Asclepius often had female attendants who played roles in rituals and ceremonies associated with healing. Home remedies. Women in Roman households were often responsible for providing home remedies and basic healthcare to their families. This included tending to minor illnesses and injuries, preparing herbal remedies, and caring for the sick. Empirical knowledge. Women, like men, may have gained practical medical knowledge through observation, experience, and passed down traditions within their families or communities. However, this knowledge was often informal and lacked the systematic training that male physicians might receive. It's important to note that the extent of women's involvement in healthcare in ancient Rome varied depending on social class, location, and cultural factors. Women from more privileged backgrounds might have had more opportunities for education and involvement in healthcare, while those from less privileged backgrounds were often limited to traditional roles like midwifery. Overall, while some women in ancient Rome did participate in healthcare and healing practices, their roles were typically secondary to those of male physicians, and formal medical education and recognition were rare for women during that time. 8. Cabbage was considered a wonder drug. Many Roman doctors linked diet with good health and touted cabbage as a superfood that could prevent and treat a wide range of ailments. It would be a lengthy task to list the good points of the cabbage, Pliny the Elder wrote. The Roman historian Cato the Elder proved him correct in a nearly 2,000-word treatise on cabbage's salubrious powers into agriculture. According to Cato, the leafy vegetable cured headaches, vision impairment and digestive issues, while the application of crushed cabbage painlessly healed wounds, contusions, sores and dislocations. In a word, it will cure all the internal organs which are suffering, he wrote. Cato even wrote that inhaling the fumes of boiled cabbage promoted fertility and that bathing in the urine of a person who ate a great deal of cabbage cured many ailments. While ancient Roman medicine had its share of superstition and misconceptions, it also laid the foundation for many aspects of modern medicine, particularly in the areas of hygiene, surgical techniques, and the use of medicinal plants. 
While ancient Roman medicine featured elements of superstition, it also made significant contributions to medical knowledge and practices, leaving a lasting impact on the field of medicine. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel.